on World News Tonight. Closed doors. Spectators forced to stay home as the games continue under a stage of emergency. Booster battle. Pfizer fights for the latest booster jab as it provides hope for life without the pandemic. Baby booms. India grapples a different kind of crisis as citizen density skyrockets. A space race. Billionaires line up to get an out-of-worldly experience in the latest trip to space. From the global resources of the Verna Media Network, this is Other Verna World News Tonight. Now reporting from Studio 24 in Colombo, here's Suzanne Shainali. A very good evening and thank you for joining with us on World News Tonight. We start off today's coverage from the updates of the Tokyo Olympics. Japan faces a resurgence in COVID infections and that resurgence has forced officials to place Tokyo under another state of emergency just three weeks after lifting the previous one. The tough new measures will overdo the period of the Tokyo Olympics. With the opening ceremony of the Summer Olympics less than two weeks away, Tokyo has entered its fourth state of emergency. Lasting from July 12th to August 22nd, Japan's latest effort to curb a resurgence in COVID-19 infections will ban all bars and restaurants in the city from serving alcohol and require them to close by 8 p.m. Besides Tokyo, the state of emergency in Okinawa Prefecture, along with quasi-state of emergency measures in Chiba, Saitama, Kanagawa, and Osaka Prefectures, will also be extended to August 22nd. The period covers the entire duration of the Olympic Games, which will be held without any spectators in most venues. After the Olympics finish, we will decide on spectators for the Paralympics as soon as possible. If we delay any further, it will be a problem for Paralympics preparation. Some athletes have said it shouldn't affect their performance. Although acknowledging that fan support is important, the United States national swimming team has said it will follow safety protocols to the best of its ability and still perform at the highest level. However, tennis star Novak Djokovic, who just won his 20th Grand Slam title at Wimbledon over the weekend, has voiced his disappointment at the Olympics' no spectator rule. The gold medal favorite says he feels divided on whether to take part in the Games. Australia reported its first locally contracted COVID-19 death of the year and the 2021 record of over 70 new cases of the virus in the state of New South Wales, which is battling the outbreak of the highly infectious Delta variant. Australia reported its first coronavirus-related death of the year on Sunday. That also comes with 77 new cases in the state of New South Wales, the highest daily number of cases this year. The state is currently battling an outbreak of the highly infectious Delta variant. Its biggest city, Sydney, with a population of 5 million, is already under another hard lockdown. But State Premier Gladys Berejiklian said she expected case numbers to rise. So we can't stress enough the importance of not only following the rules, but also realising the risk. If you don't worry about yourself, that's your decision. But think about your closest family members, your closest people in your life. They're the people that are most impacted. Of Sunday's cases, 33 were people who had spent time in the community while infectious. That means that the three-week lockdown in Sydney and its surroundings will likely be extended. The length of time of the lockdown is dependent on all of us. Australia has done much better than other developed countries in keeping its COVID-19 numbers relatively low. But its vaccination rollout has been sluggish due to supply constraints and changing medical advice with regard to its shots. UK's Prime Minister Boris Johnson is expected to confirm later the plan to lift almost all legal restrictions on social contact in England on 19th of July. To give us an update on this, we have other than a world news special correspondent, Delini Senviratna, joining us now from London in the United Kingdom. Delini? Yes, Shanali. Despite the lifting of restriction ahead of a news conference, PM Johnson has urged people to be cautious. He warned that COVID-19 cases, currently at about 30,000 a day, would continue to rise as society reopened. 
The PM's news conference will present the latest data with Downing Street saying current modeling suggests hospital admissions, serious illness and deaths from COVID-19 will continue, but at a lower level than before the vaccination program. Number 10 said the delay in moving to the final stage of the roadmap out of lockdown originally scheduled for 21st of June had allowed an additional 6.8 million first and second vaccine doses to be given out so far. The government had also moved to the expected end of restrictions closer to the school summer holidays when transmission was likely to be lower. He said the vaccine rollout had weakened the link between infections, hospital admissions and deaths, but added the pandemic was not over yet. As well as a news conference, Health Secretary Sajid Javid is expected to announce the plans in the parliament. Back to you, Shanali. Thank you. That was Atadarana World News Special Correspondent Delini Senvi Ratna reporting from London in the United Kingdom. Pharmaceutical giant Pfizer is expected to make the case to U.S. officials this week that a third vaccine is needed to ward off the contagious Delta variant. Pfizer said on Sunday that it will meet with federal health officials as soon as Monday to discuss the need for a third booster shot of the coronavirus vaccine. The meeting comes days after the vaccine maker and its partner, BioNTech, announced plans to seek U.S. and European regulatory approval for a third dose of their COVID-19 shot amid the spread of variants and data they said showed heightened risk of infection six months after initial inoculation. That push prompted a quick response from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, saying Americans do not need a booster right now. President Joe Biden's chief medical advisor, Anthony Fauci, who also directs the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, will be among those invited to the briefing. On Sunday, Fauci said U.S. health officials were not dismissing the possible future need for boosters, but that more data is needed for any formal recommendation. Well, certainly it is entirely conceivable, maybe likely, that at some time we will need a boost. It may be differentially needed depending upon the age of individuals and their underlying conditions. Now, right now, what the CDC and the FDA said in a joint statement is that at this time, we don't see the need for it. U.S. health officials are still struggling to get people in some areas to receive their initial inoculations as the highly contagious Delta variant has grown to be the nation's dominant strain with COVID-19 cases rising mostly among the unvaccinated. Still in the United States, a brutal heat wave punishing the U.S. West pushed temperatures toward all-time records. The relentless, dangerous heat once again is baking the nation, and it's a double disaster this time, prompting evacuations and reservoirs running out of water. To extreme temperatures fueling infernos across the West. In California, more than twice as many acres have burned compared to the same time last year, triggering evacuations in the northern part of the state. The Beckworth Complex fire this weekend doubling in size. Photographer Craig Philpont captured the intense conditions as a small town burned. The fire season not only prematurely ferocious, but also deadly. In Arizona, retired fire chief Jeff Petura and pilot Matthew Miller were killed in an air accident. The scorching temperatures threatening nearly 30 million Americans across the West, with thermostats soaring 10 to 20 degrees above average. Miserable. On Saturday, Utah tied its all-time hottest statewide record, a sizzling 117 in St. George, the same temperature as Las Vegas, also matching a Sin City record. You're in an oven. The extreme heat pushing the region's extreme drought to historic levels, reducing water deliveries across the West, with reservoirs hitting new lows. In Utah, one reservoir has completely run dry. This here is something different. This is something I've never seen before. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back. The United Nations has released a report saying that India's big cities are facing a burge-going house crisis amid a swelling population as the country is set to overtake China by 2027 to become the most populous country in the world. 
India is on track to overtake China as the world's most populated country by 2027, according to the United Nations. And it's facing a housing crisis. Home to 1.3 billion people, India has been witnessing an influx of people migrating from villages to cities in search of better job and education prospects. However, affordable housing remains an unresolved problem, which has led to a mushrooming of illegal settlements and slums. 24-year-old Priya moved to Delhi from Rajasthan for work. Because of, you know, job purposes from villages, people have to shift to cities and, I mean, of course, cities are now very populated. So, if, you know, if we make our village, villages more developed, more educated, I think uh, this difference will not be there. And Informal housing is often unauthorised with poor sanitation facilities, unplanned drainage and an erratic supply of clean drinking water and electricity. Upinder Kumar lives near a settlement in Delhi. He says in the next 20 years, people will turn into cannibals given the lack of jobs and homes. The Indian government launched the Housing for All mission in 2015 with a 2022 deadline. It aims to build 20 million urban housing units and 30 million rural homes. India's most populous state, Uttar Pradesh, recently proposed legislation aiming to promote a two-child policy. Under the state government proposals unveiled on Saturday, couples with more than two children would not be allowed to receive government benefits or subsidies and would be barred from applying for state government jobs. Haitian police announced that they had arrested a Haitian national who had political objectives in recruiting the gunman who assassinated President Jovenel Moise last week. Haitian police on Sunday arrested someone they suspect was a mastermind behind the assassination of President Jovenel Moïse last week. Authorities accuse Christian Emmanuel Sinan of hiring mercenaries to oust Moïse and plotting to then install himself as president. Sanon arrived in Haiti on a private plane with political objectives, according to our information. He had contacted a company specializing in security to recruit some bandits and arrived in Haiti at the beginning of June, accompanied by some of them. They were initially supposed to guarantee his security. Police say what was once a mission to protect Sinan later changed to replacing the president. Following the killing at Moise's home last Wednesday, police arrested a group of Colombians and two Haitian Americans. The authorities said it was a commando unit armed and trained. According to the Miami Herald, the Colombian suspects said their mission was to arrest Moise, not kill him. Police later confirmed Sanan had given one of the suspects an arrest warrant for the president. Although the details of the alleged plot are still unclear, along with Sanan's motives. There could, however, be an American connection. The Miami Herald also reported that some of the Colombians claimed to have been hired by a Miami-based security firm. And public records show a man with the same name as Sinan had worked as a doctor in Florida, although no confirmation yet on whether it is the same man. The assassination has plunged poverty-stricken Haiti into chaos. The government has appealed to the international community for help. On Sunday, the Pentagon said experts from the FBI and Department of Homeland Security would be traveling to the country to help with the investigation. Facebook's WhatsApp faced a barrage of complaints by the European Consumer Organization and others over privacy policy update, which has prompted a global outcry and led some users to switch to rival apps such as Telegram and Signal. To give us an update on this, we have other than a world news special correspondent Prashani Rodrigo from Helsinki in Finland. Prashani? Yes, Shanali. WhatsApp in January introduced a privacy policy which allows it to share some data with Facebook and other group firms. It said the changes permit users to message with businesses and would not affect personal conversations. The European Consumer Organization and eight of its members criticized the changes and filed complaints with the European Commission and the European Network of consumer authorities saying WhatsApp was unfairly pressuring users to accept its new policies. The group said in a joint statement that the content of these notifications, their nature, timing and recurrence put an undue pressure on users and impair their freedom of choice and they are a breach of the EU directive on unfair commercial practices. 
Furthermore, they said that WhatsApp has failed to explain in plain and intelligible language the nature of the changes and this ambiguity amounts to a breach of the EU consumer law which obliges companies to use clear and transparent contract terms and commercial communications. The groups urged the European Network of Consumer Authorities and EU Data Protection Authorities to work together to address these privacy and consumer rights concern. Back to you, Shanali. Thank you. That was Abdul Darina World News Special Correspondent Prashani Rodrigo reporting from Helsinki in Finland. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. World number one Novak Djokovic beat Italian seventh seed Matteo Berenici to win his sixth title at Wimbledon. His third straight triumph at All England Club also earned the Siberian a 20th Grand Slam title, equaling the men's record haul held by Switzerland's Roger Federer and Rafa Nadal of Spain. The death toll in the Florida condo collapse has risen to 90. There are now 217 people accounted for the 31 others remaining missing. According to the Miami-Dade country mayor, 71 of the victims have have been identified so far and they're next to kin to have been notified. A new study finds that a South Korean passport is the third most powerful in the world, meaning it can get you into almost any country in the world without the need for a visa. This is according to an annual index released by the Swiss-based research firm Henley and Partners. Heavy rains drench the Chinese capital of Beijing, causing flight cancellations and interrupted normal operations of high-speed trains. Seoul's foreign ministry has voiced strong regret over it as it has called Japanese media's unilateral leak of ongoing coordination between the two countries on a possible bilateral summit between the leaders of the two countries. Italy's triumphant soccer team returned to Rome in the early hours of today, buoyed up with adrenaline after winning the Euro 2020 final in England. Italy won the European Championship for the first time since 1968. This was the moment Italy's Gianluigi Donnarumma saved a second England penalty kick to clinch the European Championship on Sunday in a 3-2 shootout win after an extra time draw at one goal each at Wembley Stadium. Fans in Rome poured into the streets and launched fireworks to celebrate their first European Championship since 1968. In London, stunned fans looked on in horror. England's latest heartbreak in shootouts at a major tournament. Yeah, it never is when it goes to penalties, is it? It never goes to glory in the plan. Uh, it's heartbreak, man. It's, we can't. It literally, like, I, 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 we come so far. It was a different scene after just two minutes in the match when England's Luke Shaw scored to give his team an early lead. But Italy gradually took command and scored a tying goal after 67 minutes. It was the first final to be decided on penalties since 1976 and was wildly celebrated in Italy after losing in the final round in 2000 and 2012. Sunday's win was the first major international success for Italian soccer since their 2006 World Cup victory and was widely seen as a rebound from the failure of not qualifying for the last World Cup. And finally tonight, British billionaire Richard Branson soared more than 50 miles above the New Mexican desert aboard his Virgin Galactic rocket plane and safely returned in his vehicle's first fully crewed test flight to space, a symbolic milestone for a venture he started 17 years ago. Oh, there's Sir Richard Branson now. Billionaire Richard Branson on Sunday soared to the edge of space in a historic flight on his Virgin Galactic rocket plane and safely returned in the vehicle's first fully crewed test flight, a symbolic milestone for a venture he started 17 years ago. Space industry executives, future customers, and other well-wishers watched the live-streamed flight in suspense, a spectacle Branson touted as a precursor to a new era of space tourism. Reaching its high-altitude launch point at about 46,000 feet, the VSS Unity passenger rocket plane was released from its mothership 
sending it streaking upward at supersonic speed some 53 miles high. At the apex of the climb, the crew of six then experienced a few minutes of almost no gravity before the space plane shifted into re-entry mode and began a gliding descent to a runway in the New Mexico desert. The entire flight from takeoff to landing lasted about an hour. The success of the flight also gave the flamboyant entrepreneur bragging rights in a highly publicized rivalry with fellow billionaire Jeff Bezos, who had hoped to fly into space first aboard his own Blue Origin rocket. Bezos congratulated Branson in a social media post, and a third player in the billionaire space race, Elon Musk, was on hand to watch Branson's flight. Musk's SpaceX plans to send its first all-civilian crew without Musk into orbit in September. Virgin has said it plans at least two further test flights in the months ahead before beginning regular commercial operation in 2022. Several hundred wealthy would-be citizen astronauts have already booked reservations priced at around $250,000 per ticket. Well, that's all the news we have for you tonight. Anuradha Vikram Singh will be back tomorrow with another edition of World News. I'm Suzanne Shinali. Until then, stay safe and have a good night.